Hi. My name's Steve Bluen, and I'm the director of the business school. <coughs> we all know how important um, small business is and business development is. We at the business school have developed <coughs> and introduced um, a center for entrepreneurship here. The young people who are in the room today um, saluting you, especially because I do believe that uh, today's youth are tomorrow's leaders. Within our space, we have the informal business. And the informal business also have a role to play because the men and women who are selling out in the, in, on the streets, those are the men and women who bring bread on, on the table for those that are unemployed. Those are the men and women in many instances. Some of us are here today because we were supported and educated by those very same people. The challenge we have around it is that they've never been taken very seriously from a, 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 an economic planning point of view. Here I want to say, because everywhere I go, I find people saying, the minute, the minute I say we're going to support black enterprises and cooperatives, they then say, no, but what about those others who are not necessarily black? We are not discriminating. It's important for us to be able to support small and medium enterprises across the board because if we do so, it means the 18,000, for instance, who registered recently for um, SARS, we need to break down that number and see who are those SMMEs that registered and are now paying tax. State reform and boosting the role of state-owned and companies information and communication technology infrastructure or broadband rollout water sanitation and transport infrastructure operation pakisa which is aimed at growing the oceans economy and other sectors so the focus by smmes and cooperatives should also be looking into what's available in all these areas and the responsibility of the, this department is to make sure that the agenda of small and medium enterprises is understood by all these? Is it going to be the same monopoly that has always been there that ends up in many instances even blocking the little opportunity that's there for SMMEs? And you know what they say to us when we say, let's look at SMMEs, they say, ah, but you see the SMMEs are going to delay us. But we're saying, if you're talking about radical economic transformation, you need to do something about the economic inclusion what challenges are faced by SMMEs. Why is it that somebody who wants assistance will have to go to a CEDA office, from CEDA office, go to a CIFA office, from a CIFA office, go to a SARS office, from a SARS office. It just becomes very difficult even to register. It takes forever. I have been motivated by many, by the way, both black and white, who did not have to wait for government to come and give them something in order for them to be able to be successful. The energy of the people out there who see themselves starting something or growing their businesses, who see themselves as the creators of jobs rather than job seekers, that is what motivates us almost on a day-to-day basis to make sure that we make South Africa a better place and make South Africa a place where economic empowerment doesn't belong to a few, but it belongs to all those who work for it. I would just like the minister to give us um, some feedback on having to fight your way through issues such as discounted invoices. What that means is you may provide a service for a government department, we then end up having to go into what we call discounting of invoices. 20% to 40% of your revenue is taken by whoever is discounting the invoice, they pay you, and they fight with the government department to go get the balance. You're asking about the 9 billion rent and the incubation programs. Actually, there is an incubator program that is in Sardana itself. There's a hub that was built by Transnet. And I'm getting others complaining from that side that that hub is not, is not assisting. It's teaching people things, but it's not assisting them to actually get what is there in Transnet itself. The other issue about uh, discounted, discounted invoices, the problem is about government itself understanding the importance of paying on time. Small and medium enterprises do not have the big pockets. 
What government has done to deal with this thing of non-payment? One is to include in the performance agreement of um, uh, DGs this issue of the 30-day payment. It's been going on for too many years. It's been a problem. If we can go and actually do a research of how many companies lost at national, provincial, and local out of not being paid, we would be very ashamed uh, of ourselves. And there was also a talk about research on the fourth industrial revolution, yes. How do we also connect this fourth industrial revolution to the issue of skills development in South Africa? I mean, the Germans and the French and everybody, they told us here, our base is technicons. The majority of our youth go to technicons. But in South Africa, because of the past, everybody thinks, if I didn't go to university, then it means I can't get anywhere. Part of what we have to be teaching is entrepreneurship. What is entrepreneurship? And many of the colleges are, are agreeing to that. Your credit worthiness. Yeah. Some years back, when I thought having the card of Edgars and Woolies and everything was the best thing to do, I, I made the decision that I don't need this because I was better off in comparison to the majority who actually think their survival is about having all these cards. And in all honesty, it's not. Your credit worthiness is important in another level. Because really, if you have a business and you've not been able to run your business, it's because even when you, you've made a, a profit of about 100 rands, and then you think you must go and have a breakfast at Tasha, then it means you've lost something somewhere. <laughs> but I think we need to deal with it at a higher level, really, of ensuring what are the systems that we have in place that will assist people to make sure that they don't get to a credit history that makes it impossible for them to get loans. Also, even our own FDIs, they also are accountable. They can't just wake up in the morning and say, everyone who comes through that door we shall give them what they want. They do, they do need to check your business, whether your business is going to, is viable, is profitable or not, because some of the money that they have is not incentive, it's loans that need to be returned. How can we engage so that the Department of Education or any other department, the Department of uh, Human Settlement, when it is building the houses, the Department of Education is building the schools and all, where do they get the window frames? Where do they get the, the windows themselves? I mean, last week, uh, I was asking the Minister of Education. I see that the people of Wani burnt the classrooms. And now we are in a rush. We want to know who's, who's, who are you buying? the mobile schools from. Because now the issue is, we need these now. And I'm saying, that's exactly where the problem lies. We then take it for granted that there isn't a small business yeah. that can be able to contribute and sell. When we talk up for small businesses, we really mean it. We want to see it for real happening. Thank you.